This weekend, Victorians head to a state election with Labor fighting to hold on to government. Parties, of course, look for whatever edge they can get. And these days, that edge increasingly comes in the form of your personal data. This report from Madeleine Morris and producer Andy Burns. It's Sunday morning and Greens candidate Tim Reid is pounding the streets in the Victorian state seat of Brunswick. So we're up to 12. In his hand is a walk list of all the voters he's targeting today to vote for him. So why numbers 8, 15, 7A? Why those numbers? So if you're not on the electoral roll, your house doesn't get door knocked. Right. And there are quite a lot of non-citizens in Brunswick. Right, OK. So you're just hitting, hitting electoral roll, basically? Yep. Like all political parties in Australia, the Greens have access to the public electoral roll for campaigning, so they know your name, age and address before they knock on your door. I'm Tim Reid, I'm the Greens candidate for Brunswick and I'm just... By the end of this conversation, as well as Rachel Quinton's basic information, the Greens will have also recorded the issues she's interested in and how she's likely to vote. That information is sent to a database at party headquarters for subsequent campaigns. So far, so harmless, perhaps. But it's what political parties can do beyond the door knock that may give you pause for thought. I think people would be surprised to see the build-up of data that they've got and the specific profile that you can build up of a potential voter. Long gone are the days of simply trying to win you over with billboards and a chat at the polling booth. Political parties are now using powerful computing platforms to aggregate multiple sources of data to predict the issues you'll care about in an election. Liberal have a, a platform called Feedback, um, which is run by a company called Parakelion. Uh, and Labor have one called Campaign Central, which they've built um, over years and years of um, mostly constituent data and then increasingly various data sets that they're controlling. Here's how political parties can perfectly legally build up a picture of you. Take swinging voter Bridget Cottrell. They get her name, age and address through the electoral roll. They can predict her views on tax policy because they know her estimated credit score and income based on where she lives. She'll likely care about childcare policy because she entered a kids furniture competition and that company can share that data. And Labor knows she liked one of their posts on Facebook. So when Bridget is contacted by a political party, it's possible the message she receives will be tailor-made to win her over. But why do they knock on your door and not your neighbours? Because beneath the surface, there are people. No, not just people data scientists. This year, the Victorian Liberals have upped the ante, reportedly buying in powerful American data software i360 after the South Australian Liberals used it in their election and won. i360 didn't respond to several approaches from 7.30. i360. i360 um, and a range of those third party providers will sell their services on the basis of providing data sets that they already have mashing them with your existing data and then providing you with a very targeted output of who you should be going after. Where do they get their data sets, for example? Do they get them from consumer information? Unfortunately, this is the big black hole that we actually don't know. What we do know is plenty of companies are selling that data, but the information isn't about you personally. It's sold as what's known as a segment. Now, that's a large chunk of anonymised data about people who have something in common, say, buying nappies. Now, what the parties can do is cross-reference that information with other data, like the census, to build up a detailed model of how people with particular characteristics will likely vote. How useful that information is, is one question. How ethical its use is, is another. Both the Labor and Liberal parties in Victoria declined to speak to 7.30 for this story and also didn't answer detailed questions about their data use, including whether they buy consumer data. The main concern is that political parties are exempt from the Privacy Act. They are not beholden to the same rules that other people are in terms of whether or not they're respecting and protecting the individual data or information about Australian citizens. 
Barack Obama's 2012 Director of Digital Analytics says the most powerful political advertising platform is the one most of us use every day. When we upload a list and say, hey, I've got all these supporters, um, you know, uh, and here are their email addresses, I would like to go find other people who look like those supporters, other people who you know, like similar things, have similar attitudes. Facebook, can you help me find those people? And Facebook says, yes, we'll find those people for you and put ads in front of them, but they won't tell us who those people are. It may be the future, but it all makes swinging voter Bridget Cottrell very uncomfortable. I think that's actually really scary. I want to be able to make a choice for who I vote for based on my beliefs and I don't want to be targeted by things that they think that I want to hear as opposed to information that I can gather myself.